tell you, if that don't tickle us to death, we'll never die. We appreciate that. You know, I, I can't think of anywhere in the world I'd rather be right now than Nashville, Tennessee. The new year didn't start off right for me. Uh, I, I, you just can't believe. We drove 850 miles from Atlanta to Nashville. <laughs> We, uh, this is a fact with my hand up. We went to Jackson, Mississippi. We unloaded our records. We unloaded our guitars. We tuned up. We, set, we put on the best clothes we had and found out we was in the wrong town. <laughs> it, it, I, I, I thought I'd die. Uh, honestly, and it ain't just the money, it's the humility. I had to go out and pack up my records after everybody got in the lobby. And they're saying, wonder why they're leaving. You know, who fired them? <laughs> then tonight, I, I, I put on my suit, my suit's new. I put on my suit, and, and as soon as I got out of the bus and come in the auditorium, the girls started fussing at me. And they have fussed at me until the minute before we come on this stage. I can't believe you wore that sweater with it. I can't believe you didn't put on a tie and a shirt. Well, I, I wanted to, but I couldn't get it over my hair. <laughs> when I, by the way, before, before we get into this taping too much, uh, if I seem a little nervous, I'm a little nervous. I'll tell you, it's, anything like this scares me. If it's doing everybody, I might be all right. But, but it scares me when they start putting up extra stuff, and, and, and I, I'm a little bit nervous. Matter of fact, folks, I'm scared nearly to death. <laughs> the, the record company's spending a lot of money, and I just know we'll blow it. <laughs> so in a little while, I'm going to tell you about the first play I was ever in, and Lord, I hope it's funny. <laughs> We got a little story we want to tell you. You know, it, it, it always kind of thrills me to, to get to pick on a stage. I never expected to, you know, and I, we, I never did have much talent and never did pick up none on the way. I got a couple of girls here and kind of cover up for me a little bit. And I know three or four chords on this guitar. And really, if the truth is known, I ain't got no business standing on this stage in Nashville, Tennessee tonight, and I know it, honey. But, but it's a thrill to me, and I, I honestly believe that the Lord done it for me. Now, I really do, because I, I was in the fifth grade before I was ever even in a school play. Now, that's a fact. You know, a lot of people say, no, nah, ain't none of them teachers look on you different, but they do. Now, I was poor. Now, so a lot of you might have been poor. Honey, I was poor when I was a kid. I mean, like I had them stick-on soles on my shoes as long as I remember. And they used to always come off about 12 noon, you know? And the teacher would say, either stick them things on or take them off. <laughs> and I was a little bit shaggy. I had long hair. I mean, it's down to my shoulders, and I wasn't no hippie. I didn't have no dime to get it cut off. <laughs> and and, and if, when, when it was time every year for our school play, if there's 48 kids in that class, I knew who wasn't going to be in that school play, even if they needed 46 kids in the play. Me and Corrine Cunningham. <laughs> now, she, Corrine Cunningham was the only person I ever knew in my life I could look down on. <laughs> she was poorer than we were. I mean, that poor girl, that, I don't know how she got so big. Now, wh when I was in the fifth grade, I was the smallest kid in the class. I was smaller than the smallest girl because I was raised on grits and grease. <laughs> d d did you ever take a bowl of grits and take yesterday's streak of lean grease and mix in there with it? So, honey, it's as good as butter if you ain't had butter. <laughs> and, and, but you don't get too big on it. Somehow or other, Corrine Cunningham got a head and a half taller than I was, and that girl invented ugly. <laughs> she had enough oil in her hair to crank my bus out there. <laughs> it beat all you've ever seen. Well, when we got in the fifth grade, 
It was time for the school play. And I was one of the first kids that Ms. Dobbs, who was our teacher at that time, called out to be in that play. And I almost cried. It about tickled me to death. And, and, and she told us that we was going to be in a play called Picking Up Paw Paws and Putting Them in Your Pocket. Now, I don't know how many of you is in that play, but it's one more good play, I'll tell you that. And, and each one of us would have a partner. We had a girl in our class named Betty Ann Moore. That was the prettiest thing I ever laid my eyes on. She had long curls. She could tap dance. She could sing. She could play a piano. She, she wore a different dress to school every day. She ate in the cafeteria. <laughs> and you can't get much richer than that, buddy. <laughs> and when Ms. Dobbs called out my partner, it was Betty Ann Moore. Buddy, I ran every inch of the way home, and I went tearing in my house, and I said, Daddy, I'm in the school play. It's called picking up pawpaws, putting them in your pocket, and Betty Ann Moore is my partner, and my dad was beside himself. One of his kids had finally made it, you know. He was, <laughs> he was proud, I'll tell you that much. We, we, Ms. Ms. Dobbs sat down and she played that song on the piano and, and she, gave us, she gave us our little note that, that showed us how to sing the song and she started going through it. First we was to learn the singing, then we was to learn the dancing and there was me and Betty Moore, we'd have to hold hands, you know, and we'd do it out on this. Oh, I just thought I'd go crazy, so ooh, I can still remember. Well, anyway. <laughs> Anyway, Ms. Dobbs sat down at that piano. She went over it with us, you know, and then we went into it. It's a distant, a lot of you was, I'm sure, in the same play. It's a very simple little play called Picking Up Paw Paws, Putting Them in Your Pocket. Picking Up Paw Paws, Putting Them in Your Pocket. Picking Up Paw You've been through that one, I'm sure. I know you have the way you have. Your name ain't Corinne Cunningham. Right Anyway, there we was. Now, most of the kids, they did, the only time they practiced was when they was at school. Honey, I went home, I locked myself in that back room, I got front and, uh, in front of that mirror, and all night long, night after night, picking up paw paws, putting them in your pocket. I learned it so good, and Ms. Dobbs herself said that in 25 years of picking up paw paws, I picked them up better than anybody she had ever seen. She even said I'd done it better than the girls, buddy, and that's something. Well, anyway, there's about three days, four time for that play to start, and I was rehearsed up to a fare you well, and Ms. Dobbs made the announcement. She said, now all the boys will wear white shoes, navy blue pants, a white shirt, and a navy blue tie. And I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> but I ran every inch of the way home, and that's a long run considering we live 10 miles from that school. I ran in and I told my daddy, my mother died when I was a baby, so I, my dad was my mother in law So I ran in, I told my dad, I said, I said, Daddy, I always called him that all my life, <laughs> still till this day. I said, I, I've got to have a pair of white shoes, navy blue pants, a white shirt, and a navy blue tie. And my daddy went into hysterics. <laughs> he said, Boy, the closest we can come to that is to whitewash your feet. When my sister come home from work, I was squalling in the bedroom, you know. I, the whole world had crashed in around me. I was just a tender kid of 15 years old in the fifth grade, so. <laughs> you can imagine what it done to me. Well, well anyway, anyway, my sister said, now just take it easy. She said, we'll work something out. And she always came to my rescue that way. She, so she went and bought some writ, blue writ. And she took an old pair of pants I had as slick we wire. I know you've had them, some of you, as poor when you was a kid. And she dyed them with that new blue writ. The only thing was they come out of pukey purple, you know. <laughs> and, and, and they dyed them old black cardboard sole shoes white and they speckled. My, I, I'll never forget my daddy said, boy, from a distance, they ain't gonna know but what that shirt's white. 
That shirt was one of them old blue denims that just faded. But all at once, my dad remembered something that thrilled me out of my mind. He said, boy, I've got a brand new tie in there in the chest of drawers that was given to me for a Christmas present I've never even had on. And I thought, well, now if I got a new tie, they may not notice anything else. He brought that thing out in the first place. It wasn't navy blue. It was kind of a, was a, kind of a powder puff blue. It was about this wide <laughs> and about that long and had a hand-painted pink hula girl on the front of it. <laughs> and, and I knew Miss Dobbs wouldn't put up with that, and I told him so. He said, boy, it ain't no problem. We'll scrape it off. So he got a razor blade and he scraped. Then I wound up with a powder puff blue tie that wide and that long with a hand-painted pink hula girl that looked like she had leprosy or something. <laughs> he tied that thing around my neck and the knot was the same size as my head. <laughs> and I took off to school with that necktie dragging the ground. Every third step, I'd nearly strangle myself with it. I went busting in the, busting in the room and Miss Dobbs looked at me and said, there ain't no way. And I started squalling again. She said, just take it easy. You'll still be in the play. Just, just, just don't start that. She hated seeing anybody panic. So we went into the auditorium. The play is supposed to be at 3 o'clock. All the parents that could come was there, you know. It was a big day. And I was happy because I was going to get to be in it anyway. We went strolling in that auditorium. She said, now, I'm changing your position. You know where I wound up? <laughs> On the back row with Corrine Cunningham. <laughs> 